So there's this really cool feature in Blender. It's an add-on that's built right into the software called Rigify. And essentially it allows you to automatically rig a character in Blender. You just have to um, roughly line up some bones first with this um, rough meta rig. So it's very simple to actually use. And once you've placed all those rough bones into the position where they need to be, you can just go and generate this rig, which is what we have here. Comes with all of these really cool controllers and um, it's just all set up for you out of the box and it's just really really cool i've been playing around with the, these things for quite a few years i've done a lot of videos on um, the auto rigging feature in blender and it's always been one of my more popular um, videos when i do it so i hope you guys are able to follow along and if you guys haven't seen the discord server yet go ahead and check it out in the description below it's a really cool place where you can share a lot of the projects that you do you can chat to people um, it's just really buzzing on there so let's jump right into this i'm going to actually show you where you can download this specific character and how to kind of roughly roughly quickly set it up if you don't have your own or you can just skip to the part where we did a rigging with the chapter marks and if you if you happen to have your own character that you want to rig so i think i've said enough for the intro let's jump right into it i really hope you guys have fun with this one so some of you watching this may not have your own character to follow along with so what i'm going to do i'm going to put a link in the description below to um mixamo this is adobe mixamo it's free to create an account and once you create an account you're just going to simply click on characters and you can just scroll through the character section and pick whichever one you want i've gone with this one here um it's called eve by jay gonzalez and that's the model i'm going to use i'm just going to click on download and it's going to come here with an fpx option and in a t pose um, i've covered adobe mixmo in the past yes you can have your own animations and rigs coming with these characters but those ones are motion captured and they don't have a lot of controllers you kind of just get what you get what we're doing here is just downloading the character with its textures in a t pose and you can even choose different um, poses here but let's just go with t pose and then click on download now i'm just going to cancel that because i've already downloaded um, this before but once you've downloaded yours you can you know find somewhere in your computer i've put the fbx on my desktop and go ahead and launch blender and at the making of this tutorial i'm going to be using the 3.3 um, stable release version of blender and uh, you can see over here it is i'm going to go into the viewport here and simply go to file and let's go to our import option simply go down to fbx and like i said i've placed mine on my desktop i'm just going to click on it and go import fbx and you're going to see it's super tiny so let's press s to scale it up a little bit bigger something like that um, that's about right and this is really important if we were to actually select the armature it comes with it which is no good it's okay for motion capture but it doesn't have any controls for us to animate with if we selected that and just deleted it you can see this happens here so let's just simply go and select the character mesh first alt p and let's just go clear and keep transforms and now if we go Control i or command i to inverse the selection so everything else is selected we can go x and delete that okay so now we just have a character here um, make sure if you're working with a character that any of the um, groups that are on the object data properties just go to this little arrow here and go delete all groups and certainly we don't want any sort of shape keys or anything like that just a character here and just get rid of that modifier if it has one as well okay so now we just have this character and we also want to press N on our keyboard and just go over to our um, transforms. We want to make sure all of these are applied. So we're going to go Control A, or I'm sorry, Control A. Yep, that's it. And let's go all transforms. Okay, so the scale is correct, the rotation is correct, and it's nice and in the middle of our scene. Now, this does remind me I should probably turn on my screencast keys um, so you guys can see what I'm pressing. Make that font a little bit bigger for you guys. And let's go with a bit of a different color today. I feel like green. Okay, that looks a lot better. So now, we have a character. Um, obviously you could have just skipped to the next bit if you already had a character. So let's now go Shift A and let's go to our armature. Now you may only see the armature option here with no um, extra options. And if that is the case, you need to enable Rigify. So let's simply go to Edit, Preferences, and you're gonna to go to Add-ons and up here in the search, you're gonna type in Rig and you should see something called Rigging Rigify. Now you can see mine is already ticked, but if yours is not, just click on it and then close this. And now if you go Shift A and you go to your armature options, you should see these options here. Now I've covered some of these animal rigs like the cat one before. And the one you see here is the human meta rig. Now this is the one I usually use and it's a lot more complicated. 
Um, it's just a lot more bones to move around, but the one I'm gonna be showing you is the exact same principle, so later on you can come and use this one. But for now, I'm just gonna to go to the armature, so Shift A, armature, and I'm gonna add in the basic, and I'm gonna to go to basic human meta rig, right? And here we have it, and we're gonna go S to scale it up till it roughly matches the um, shape here of a character. In fact, let's enable up here, the toggle the X-ray on, and that can make it simpler. So S to scale, and let's get it till the shoulders here are roughly lined up with the shoulders. That's always a good point, I think. And that's roughly in place, so let's go Control A and always apply the scale when you scale an armature system in the object mode. The same with a character, because Blender is going to be looking at the scales when it comes to um, placing the weights and stuff like that. Okay, so now let's select the actual armature itself, and let's go into edit mode. And we can do one or two things here. We could just go individually on both sides and move bones around, or we can come up here and then toggle on the X. Now, obviously, if you're working with a character that wasn't as symmetrical as this, one arm might be missing or up or down, and it might not be in a T pose. In that case, you want to do this a little bit differently. Okay, but in this case, we can get away with enabling the X mirror. So we're going to grab this hand here. We can go G and move it up to where the hand is. Grab this nub here, move it to where the intersection in the arm is. And this one here is roughly in a shoulder. Let's just move these two nubs a little bit more in. And then we're going to press 7 on a number pad to go to our top orthographic view. And let's move that a little bit more in the middle. This one here, a little bit more back for the elbow. That's always a good place to put it. And then the hand, move it forward a little bit. You could work in two separate views if you wanted to, but I prefer just to go, you know, between the different views. It's fine for me. So we've got that arm lined up. Let's select these clavicle bones. And in our front orthographic view, let's just move those ones down here and then select this one and move it down a little bit. And you want to get these clavicles so they're inside. So go G, Y, and move them back into the character a little bit. So they sit about there. And then let's go over to the bottom here. These hip bones here, let's select this one here. Bring that down a little bit. Go into the right orthographic view. We don't want it too forward or too out. We just want it kind of more in the middle here. And then these um, sections here that intersect, the tailbone area, just select that. Just these nubs here. And in your right view, just move them more to the middle a little bit. And you can work your way up the chain, just selecting these different nubs. We don't want a two in the middle. That's a mistake people often make. A little bit more back, like your actual spine, um, but not too forward either. And then we're going to select these bones, these nubs here by clicking and dragging over them. And this is the bottom of the neck. Select this middle one, bring that down. And the top bone is the very last one, is the head. We're going to select that and just bring it down about here, and you see you can have these segments in the next. We've got one, two segments, and the head starts here. Don't have it um, too forward, I'll quickly show you, like this. That's what people oftentimes do, or too back, just have it more straight up like that. Okay, oops, what am I doing here? Um, my keyboard isn't working very well. I, I just changed the battery. Um, anyway, so in our front view here, let's select this knee bone and move it up to where the knee is. Let's go into the right view, and we want this not to be in the middle. It needs to be a little bit more forward. And then we can also select these bones here. In this case, the character has higher heels, so I'm going to move it up to where the ankle is. And then this toe, I'll move up a little bit back like that. And that's where the foot's going to fold. This would be a little bit different if the foot was flat, but you know, you get the idea here. Go back into the different views, make sure everything lines up. Um, it's actually pretty self-explanatory here. It's not that much to do. And obviously, you got the breastbones here. Just move them in a little bit. Okay. So, that is everything lined up. Um, let's just look at the hands here. Just got to correct that a little bit. Okay, cool. I'm going to turn off X mirror. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to toggle off the X-ray. And if you can see, everything looks cool. Let's go back into our object mode. Now you might think that you could just parent the character to this system right here. But what you actually have to do now is with your rig selected, in object mode, you're gonna to go to your armature or object data properties for your armature. It's a little green dude here. And you're gonna to go to the rigify option and click on generate rig. Now in some rare cases, you might get an error if you misalign some of your bones, but for the most part, it should be fine. You can see it has created this whole collection of controllers and things here. And if you look under your skeleton, you can see there's a whole bunch of things here. But don't worry, don't let that intimidate you. With this now active, let's go into our pose mode. 
Now, all of these bones here are actually just control bones. They're not things that are actually gonna be deforming our mesh. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna press A to select all of them, and then we're gonna press H to hide them. Now, this is very important. Hold in Shift on your keyboard, and then left click on this little tab here under the skeleton, see that layer? And we've now added in these bones here, and they should be the deformation bones. So if you actually left click on one, go to your bone properties, you should be able to see def, a DEF, and that tells you the deformation bones, right? If you've accidentally selected um, a different one, and you click on this, and you go to the prefix, you should see it's something else, and that doesn't make sense, okay? People oftentimes get stuck on that when they're beginners, so make sure it's just this one free down. It's usually always been the same with Rigify. So we have these deformation bones. Let's go into our object. Now we're simply gonna select our character in object mode, holding in shift select, Okay, so here's one thing where I should actually explain it a little bit better. Um, when it generated our rig for us, the, when we generated the rig automatically, it kept the original bones that we placed in here and built on top of it. So what we actually wanna do is we wanna get the meta rig here, that's the original, and we wanna go M and we wanna just move it to a new collection and then just hide that collection, just turn it off. And now just select over here our rig, the rig that's been generated Okay, and that is the rig you wanna take your character mesh. So click on the character mesh and holding in shift, select then the rig that's been generated and then go control P and then we have automatic weights. And now it's parented to those deformation bones. So now we can, with the rig selected, we can go back into our pose mode and then we can hold in shift and then click on that third layer down again and then go alt H and bring back our controls. Now, if we select these controls and we press R to rotate or G to move, you can see this is what we have. And there it is. Blender has done all of the big work for you. How cool is that? Now, one thing Blender does relatively okay is the weight painting, automatic weight painting, but there's still gonna be some bits, especially with a complicated character like this with a lot of little bits. There are gonna be things that still intersect but that's not down to the rig, that's just the problem of um, the weight painting. So at that point, if you ever wanted to correct some of the weights, um, you can press A to select everything and press H to hide it. Simply just hold in shift and enable that deformation layer again. And in your object mode, you can select your, your um, rig, holding in shift, select your character, and then go into weight paint. You can enable your x-ray, and then you just have to go control and left click on any of these bones. And then as normal, you will come here and use your painting, weight painting tools and your brushes with different strengths and you'll paint on those values. And I'm not gonna go into um, weight painting because this is a auto rigging tutorial, but the warmer the values are, that's more control. So for example, if I left click, holding control and left click on this bone here, you can see the warmer colors or where the influence is. So I can always come with the add here and I can kind of paint it in a little bit more. The warmer the colors are, the more away they are from blue, the more influence there is. So just by going through like with the different bones, you can create more influence where it is needed, right? By And correct things like that. But that's a whole nother subject, but that's really easy to do. So um, you guys can watch different videos on white painting. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial, I hope it's been informative. And uh, I will be adding this to my Patreon. So you guys can check it out if you want. But yeah, it's really fun. You can um, rig characters usually right out of the box really well. Like I said, this character has a few more items attached to it. So there's a few more things to do with um, correcting the weights. But overall, you can see this works um, super well. Um, it's so cool that there is a feature like this in Blender. It's been in Blender for quite a while. Um, so yeah, if you like this video, give it a like and don't forget to check out in the description below the Discord server for the Pixar community. You can share there what you've done, especially if you follow along with this project or one of the other projects. I'll see you guys next time for another Blender tutorial.